Hello everybody, my name is Alesh Eisner and welcome to the Canadian Money Talk, the channel about Canadian investing and personal finance. Please like and subscribe. I record two videos per week, so make sure you ring the notification bell to get notified each time one comes out. Since I haven't talked much about bonds, I wanted to do a short video just so we all know what they are. Bonds are loans, whether to the government or to a company. You give the federal or provincial government or Ford uh, Canada $1,000, they promise to pay you $1,000 per year in interest, and after 10 years, they give you your $1,000 back. This is distinctly different from shares I have been talking about, which are ownership in the company. Bonds can be purchased individually through an ETF or a mutual fund. If you buy a new bond, your money is going to the company or to the government. If you buy an ETF or mutual fund, the money is buying existing bonds. The bond market is three times the size of the stock market, by the way. The risk of bonds is that the company will go bankrupt. With governments, that risk is next to zero. The interest the bond pays needs to compensate the lender for the risk, so company bonds will pay better than government bonds. All other things being equal, bonds are less risky than stocks. Also, if the company does go bankrupt because the bonds are loans, the loan holder will have rights to the company's remaining assets ahead of the shareholder, so it's likely they will at least get their money back after all the bankruptcy procedures are over with. Bonds have something called the yield curve. Just like a term deposit loan you make to your bank, which pays higher interest the longer the term deposit is, the longer the duration of the bond, the more time there is for something bad to happen to the company, and the more compensation the lender needs. So a 30-year bond pays more per year than a 10-year bond. Bond prices are affected by interest rates. You'll note the interest for a bond is stated in dollars, not as a percentage. So a given bond pays the same dollar amount of interest per year. And when a Bank of Canada raises interest rates, new bonds that come out pay more interest. Existing bonds, in order for somebody to buy the existing bond, will want to discount off the price of the bond to account for the higher paying alternative, that is the new bonds coming out. Due to this discount, when interest rates go up, current bond prices go down. When interest rates go down, of course, the price of existing bonds goes up. The longer the term of an existing bond is, the more it is affected by an interest rate change because there are more payments which are different from the new bond. A bond that has 10 years left will be affected more by an interest rate change than a bond with 5 years left. And if you are wondering why not just hold existing bonds to term rather than sell them and take the hit after an interest rate increase, there's an opportunity cost uh, to holding bonds that pay less than the new bonds you could be holding, so you are losing money either way. Secondly, bond prices will change with risk. For example, when the country of Greece got into financial trouble some years back, its bonds would have dropped in price because suddenly Greek bonds looked riskier and people were getting out of them, selling them and driving the price down. Bond prices can also change just by demand. When people are selling stocks, for example, and want to get into something safer, they will drive the price of the bonds up as they buy them. The concept of a yield uh, with a bond is similar to dividend yield on a stock. The bond yield as a percentage is interest divided by the price, and so the two have an inverse relationship. As the price goes up, the yield goes down, and price down means yield is up, since the numerator, the interest, is fixed in dollars for the bond. So if the price is bid up, as in the two of the previous examples, where interest rates go down or there's demand, the yield, uh, also thought of as the return on your investment, goes down. With the Greece example, as Greece became riskier and bonds sold off, the price went down and the yield started going up. The sell-off stopped when the yield, or the return, became so high that the owners of the bonds now felt adequately compensated for the risk of Greece defaulting on their debt. The last bit of info about bonds is that the Government of Canada bond yields are used to set the fixed rate mortgage rates. 
our banks use the 10-year Government of Canada bond yield as the basis for their 10-year fixed rate mortgage at the time. Variable rate mortgages, however, are set by the Bank of Canada changing their interest rates. Because interest rates are so low today, it's likely they can only go up and reduce the price of existing bonds. Further, any new bonds that come out today are also, because of low interest rates in effect today, not paying very much interest. There's not much money to be made investing in bonds, and I am therefore not a big fan of bonds right now. I own some bonds through balanced mutual funds, but I let the professional bond traders and fund managers make those decisions. I hope you learned a little about bonds today. If you have any requests on what you would like me to cover in future videos, please put that into the comment section. Please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and may you have a profitable day.